Good morning, year 12. I know this is Easter, so you are under no obligation uh, to complete this work in this instance, uh, but I thought I'd just continue to use my time to be proactive and productive um, so I don't personally get stuck in a rut, and you may wish to do so as well. We're moving really beautifully through this collection, and today I want to go ahead and have a little look at The Little Vagabond. Now this is an experienced poem and you'll find this on page 87 within your collection. And I thought I'd start with a little fun fact, or at least this is fun in terms of teacher talk anyway. So in 1839, uh, the collected edition of Songs of Innocence and Experience actually chose to omit to leave out uh, this poem as it was deemed too subversive, its content, its message was deemed too subversive by contemporary readers. Now that nice little fun fact in itself is really important for us. We are studying the social and political protest paper at A-level. So if this poem was deemed too subversive, then that's a nice shining light telling us that this is one of our top 10, our key poems that we want to know that we need to know inside out for our paper, okay? It's going to have a lot of rebellious spirit. It's going to have uh, lots of ideas that are contrary um, to Blake's contemporary thinkers, or at least the, uh, the status quo, uh, you know, in the late 19th century, uh, the early 20th century. And that tells me a lot already. So I think it's worth writing that down at the top of your poem there, just to remind yourself of the great importance of this poem. Okay, so I've got the overview there for you, but what I'd like to do first is read the poem. I'd love to start there. I think this is um, a brilliant poem. Uh, the poetic voice is really interesting, especially as the poetic voice is a child um, in the experience section, which isn't always the norm. But let's talk about that in a moment and read the poem. So the little bag of vagabond. Dear mother, dear mother, the church is cold, but the alehouse is healthy and pleasant and warm. Besides, I can tell where I'm used well. Such uses in heaven will never do well. But if at the church they would give us some ale, and a pleasant fire, our souls to regale, we'd sing and we'd pray all the livelong day, nor ever once wish from the church to stray. And the parson might preach and drink and sing, and would be as happy as birds in the spring. A modest Dame Lurch, who was always at church, would not have bandy children, nor fasting, nor birch. And God, like a father rejoicing to see his children as pleasant and happy as he, would have no more quarrel with the devil or the barrel, but kiss him and give him both drink and apparel. Okay, I love this poem. You can already hear phonetically uh, that we have lots there in terms of rhyming couplets, but we'll talk about that again in just a moment. So here is your overview. I thought about this poem. I thought if I was summarizing this, really trying to condense down what the focus is, um, then it would be this here. So the poem describes how an impoverished child, uh, we can tell it's an impoverished child from the title itself, vagabond, a derogatory term uh, to describe, uh, you know, an individual uh, on the, the, the outskirts of society uh, in this sort of wretched circumstance. So the child is describing within this poem how he feels uh, himself and other families like him should deal with their wretched circumstance. And what he seems to put forward is quite a, a well-written and convincing argument um, that they should be granted access to alcohol and so should the authority figures. And then maybe they might lighten their oppressive hold on him. So the poem itself contains a scathing attack on the cold nature of the church. Um, and that's cold both sort of spiritually, emotionally, um, and literally as well, um, think Scrooge. So the nature of the church there is condemned. And, at, you know, in Blake's time, there were many poor houses and lots of parishes in the local area um, would be responsible for taking care of those uh, poor families. But we know that Blake believes they failed in that duty. 
so because of this, because of this failure, then of course the poem has an ironical satirical effect uh, and all it you know, serves to do is continue to reinforce Blake's implicit social criticism. Okay, we spoke about the term social realism in the last video. Uh, we have a nice touch of that, that here as well. Uh, but that last line there, this is satirically reinforcing the bitterness of Blake's implicit social criticism. Okay, implicit means it's, it's within, it's found within uh, his writing. Um, and so that's really key to write down for yourself too. Okay, a little activity for you now. So now that you've got some general idea as to what the poem is about, I want you to have a go in just a second of pausing this video and complete a you do. So I want you to find for me some evidence uh, for each of the bullet points below from the poem, okay? So in your exercise book, you're going to place a little vagabond from Songs of Experience as your title, and you're going to write down each of these ideas in full, please, but leaving a line or two in between so that you have some space to go and hunt back through the poem, read it for a second time, really important that you do, and find some quotes, one or two, uh, that help to capture this moment, okay? So we've got Blake's view of organised religion as cold and repressive. That's a fairly easy one to start. Uh, Blake's view on God, not as a tyrannical, jealous God, not the prohibitive God uh, that was promulgated by the church, that thou shall not, but actually as a loving father. That's what the, the child seeks to embrace instead. Um, the childlike innocence and naivety, however, of the, the poetic voice, even though this isn't from experience, innocence, sorry, it's still here, in experience. Um, the subversive attitude of the child's views, uh, any oppositions or contraries, you know, two opposites going on in the poem, the contraries, pairs of opposites, uh, and any puritanical denial of the flesh that they capture here as well. Okay, so as I said, the poem's on page 87, you can see at the bottom there. Give yourself 10 minutes, pause the video now. Okay, um, actually, let me just go back for a second to this. So hopefully you have some quotes down. I'll just tell you what I would have chosen. So Blake's view of organised religion as cold and repressive, or the first line, the church is cold. Okay, that's, that's absolutely clear. The church is cold. Uh, Blake's view on God, uh, not as tyrannical, but actually as a loving father. Um, then you, well, you've got the last stanza, haven't you? God, like a father, rejoicing to see his children as pleasant and happy as he. Okay, uh, the childlike innocence and naivety. Well, you can look at this bit here where he simply thinks um, that if the church in the second stanza would give us some ale and a pleasant fire, okay, then they wouldn't wish to stray from the church. I mean, that's a very reductive, simplistic idea. You know, what he's suggesting, you know, the solution to this sort of national, uh, you know, state of poverty and repression is, is alcohol, is ale. And of course, that is extremely naive. Um, and that's what I would have chosen for that one as well. Uh, the subversive attitude of the child's view, so the child going against the status quo, well, again, you could have had the church is cold, but when he says here, I can tell where I'm used well, okay, that, could, that sort of idea, that awareness that he is this site for exploitation within his contemporary world, um, is quite important as well, and the fact that he is willing to call out, uh, to name drop, uh, a modest Joan Lurch, um, who is, of course, this sort of evil folklore figure who is cruel to her charges. Uh, she's kind of, I guess, the personification of the, the church's is cold nature. I mean, that's really subversive. He's attacking authority figures there as well. Um, oppositions and contraries. Well, you've got the idea of God and the devil. And they seem to be in this poem brought together. There'd be no more quarrel between them. This, this sort of note, this lack of antagonism um, to kind of placate the devil with alcohol, um, to reconcile the devil and God, uh, like an estranged sort of family member, um, is quite interesting. Uh, we'll talk about that again later, but that is an example of the contraries in the poem. And then this puritanical denial of the flesh, okay? Well, it's the idea that the child needs to be given the ale and a pleasant fire. It's the lack of those things in his life. 
um, that links back to the uh, denial of the flesh uh, that was sort of upheld within this very Old Testament puritanical uh, sort of state. So any of those would have been superb. Okay, so here is some uh, key analysis for you now for an I do. So I'll leave this little moment, this section. You probably want to pause throughout. There's quite a lot here, uh, but let's break it down. So the first thing, of course, is the poetic voice and its message. I mentioned before at the start when reading this that the poetic voice is interestingly a child. And I say interestingly because this is an experienced poem. So why might it be a child? What's the point of this with an experienced poem? I thought personally that these children, we've mentioned this for some time, are thrust out of childhood at a very young age and therefore become dominated by the world of experience. So actually for me now, when I say that, it's not so much of a surprise that the poetic voice here in experience poem is technically a child, but this is not the sort of awareness you would expect a child to have, okay? They have been thrust far too prematurely into adulthood, and that's why I think the poetic voice is allowed to be a child here, okay, in terms of, you know, biologically speaking, a child. The child is also a vagabond, okay? And I mentioned this once before. That's a derogatory noun that you would use to label those um, who unfortunately would have found themselves in wretched circumstance, uh, would not have been recipient of love and charity um, and its institutions and, and would therefore uh, be in the, in the real lower rungs of that hierarchy. Um, now, to Blake's contemporary readers, and his indoctrinated readers by society as well, that term vagabond wouldn't have evoked any sympathy, okay? There would not have been sympathy for these figures. Um, and, and so such children would likely um, have received charity from the church, uh, but such charity, of course, fell short. I spoke about the church being called cold, that's physically, but emotionally and spiritually, spiritually too okay that church the poetic voice fills is full of life denying and oppressive rules so loads of key stuff there you might want to pause at this moment if you just need to digest that information the next thing i'd like to talk about is the poem's structural choices and i think there are some really beautiful well thought out choices here the first is that the poem is littered with rhyming couplets you can see them throughout Ale, regale, day, stray, sing, spring. Um, sometimes those uh, poetic voices drop, sorry, the rhyming couplets drop out in the poetic voice. Um, and the opening line is a nice indicator of that because church followed by cold and then the next line warm, cold, warm, that isn't a rhyming couplet. And I think that's purposeful. Okay, that's a purposeful calculated choice because the, the you know the cold of the church the church and its coldness okay is so out of step with the people that it serves so that you know the cold church doesn't rhyme with anything else um to show how to how out of touch or out of step it is okay with the people it serves now if you look at line 11 there is an internal rhyme um and that is with lurch and church Okay, so we do like a bit of an internal rhyming couplet or internal rhyme. Um, and I think that's important because it adds weight to the sort of accusation that's being uh, used here, the subversive accusation from the child that Madame Lurch, Dame Lurch, sorry, um, who is this embodiment of oppression uh, through the church, um, the fact that it rhymes the church and Lurch, they're one and the same, aren't they? Okay, they're one and the same adds weight to this figure this melancholic folk figure who is cruel to her charges and damaged them physically with the birch with the cane as well as spiritually okay so that's a real weighty line at the heart of the poem in terms of its accusations what is then blake's intention okay i summed it up for you here i think overall what this poem is trying to do with the way that it paints this portrait of poverty with its very simple materialistic uh, solution, uh, which seems to be the only solution the child can think of 
to society's shortcomings. I think what it aims to do is to attack this joyless religion. And this is Blake's Blake coming through here. So this is Blake using the child as his mouthpiece to attack joyless religion and its austerities okay it's real strictness and it's binding power um it's repression and all of those religious bigots those figures those extremists who believed um you know you know he believed sorry that, that they would do better actually if they allowed just some room just some room in their hearts um for the desires of the flesh okay so yeah maybe alcohol but not really that okay that's not really the solution here it's, it's something more tangible something more material displays of love shows of love okay deeds not words comes to mind right now okay that's what he felt those religious bigots should do to prove their real love for god deeds not words okay allowing some some room for desire and harmony um, for these figures who suffered. So here are some thinking points for you. This is going to take you about 12, 15 minutes, some questions that I want you to have a go at, okay? Um, it's pretty self-explanatory, so I'm not going to go ahead and read the questions out for you. Um, but I will say for the second question, there's a little bit of a hint, okay? We know that Blake desired balance and we know that that state of balance he called organized innocence so for question two that's just a little hint a little moving you in the right direction there um in case you're stuck so you've got the definition of, pl of plaintiff there at the bottom in case you're stuck there as well but you're, you're finding evidence from the poem guys and writing whoops this out in full sentences in your exercise books please so give yourself 12 15 minutes pause the video okay before we finish this mini lesson on the little vagabond i just wanted to give you some final contextual um ideas and awareness for your ao3 um, just to make sure you have everything you need so i think the trickiest part of this poem is at the end but we always know the ends of poems are the most significant. So it's, I really need to make sure you understand this. So as I've popped it at the end of the poem, it seems the child feels that there is a possibility, even if it's just a fantasy, that there might be some sort of reconciliation between God and the devil, them being brought together, this vision of joy, this, this end to the antagonism between good and evil, between the contraries here. Um, and I think that's really telling because I think that, and this is what I was referring to in the second question there, um, might be well sort of evoking that state of idealism that Blake yearned for, that state of organized innocence. He felt that that was a superior state to the very partialities of innocence and experience. When I say partialities, I mean that both innocence and experience are limited views and thus incomplete. They are partialities. But if these two contraries are reconciled, harmonized, brought together, then there might well be room for this estrangement to be solved. Um, and I think that is a metaphor Okay, I think it's metaphorical for what Blake saw in his own world. Okay, a reconciliation between the two, um, you know, contraries. Um, he didn't think necessarily it was possible during his lifetime, but he wasn't without hope in his social criticism that, you know, the world could move forward and embrace a far more sort of humanitarian, uh, liber you know, liberal uh, vision of the world. Now, it's interesting because as it is innocence and experience and the collections are oppositional so I'm both limited he rarely depicts any state of bliss or harmony in his work um and I think that's important because even though there is bliss and harmony suggested in the last line but kiss him and give him both drink and apple drink and apparel apparel sorry I can't talk this morning it's Monday uh, I always say this but I think this moment of bliss at the end um, is unfortunately mythical. 
is is far too idealistic and so it's fleeting it's ephemeral okay it does not exist in his world and so just to leave you with this idea the vagabond's hope for harmony, really, for reconciliation, for uh, mercy, pity, pity, peace and love, those, those ideas, I think they are far too distant, too improbable. They do not seem viable at the end of the poem. And so this is why this poem is, is, is only, you know, projecting a partiality, a limited perspective because it is far too idealistic, interestingly, for an experienced poem, of course, but it is, okay? The child is capable of sophisticated argument, um, you know, even suggesting that God ought um, to sort of compl comply to his idea of reconciliation, but it's not happening. It's not possible, okay? And so all the child is left with at the end of the day is the attractiveness of the, you know, the, the alehouse to the poor, okay uh to alcohol is as the only means of escapism from this cruel and cold world okay so a beautiful poem a heartbreaking one nonetheless i wanted to pre-warn you that we are moving on to another amazing uh group of paired poems there the holy thursday poems from innocence and experience so just make sure you have a little go read about them swat up before the next video Okay, it's been an absolute pleasure uh, being with you here this morning, year 12, and complete this if you will today or whenever you, you know, it takes your fancy. No pressure this morning. Take care.